Good evening, Internet. Ed from Iridium Solutions up in British Columbia, Canada. Tonight, I want to talk to you about the blue uh, heavier duty Esmark bandages that we sell on our website, iridiumsolutions.ca. That's full disclosure. Everything that I'm showing you tonight is for sale by me. So you, I guess you could take that with a grain of salt, right? Um, Esmark bandages are effectively uh, the same concept as what you might know as the SWAT T tourniquets, okay? They're uh, elastic rubber bandages, they're four inches wide. The SWAT T's are four and a half feet long. These uh, hospital grade Esmark bandages are six feet long. So uh, the material is a little thinner, but the uh, you make up for it in the length. You get an extra foot and a half, which lets you do a few more things with it. <sighs> I've said before, I'll say again, um, these uh, rubber elastic bandages aren't as effective as a dedicated commercial off-the-shelf windless tourniquet. They're just not, okay? They, and you know, we'll, we're gonna throw this on my arm uh, and, uh, and it will occlude blood flow to an arm. Legs can be a different story. And uh, the other thing about them is they, you know, there's some installation issues that require extra training. But outside of the sort of tourniquet world, these things are fantastic for making uh, pressure dressings, right? For wrapping things up, for, for, for doing compression wraps, uh, for holding gauze or uh, wound packing in place. Um, they, so so they, they sort of flex into different things. And if you need to use them to control blood, uh, limbs like an adult arm and down, so children, adolescents, pets, uh, things like that, they can be quite effective on. All right, so we're gonna look at uh, what we've done here. This is a six foot long, by four inch wide, um, hospital grade elastic bandage. I'm not gonna call it a tourniquet because I believe that we should just save tourniquets for the, you know, sort of cat gen seven and the soft tees and stuff like that. But one problem that we have, if we try to use it to control a uh, massive hemorrhage, say in, you know, one of our limbs, uh, like an arm where we only have one hand, one of the, uh, as an aside, one of the sort of criteria to meet for a, a tourniquet, a windless tourniquet to be uh, committee on tactical combat casualty care approved is it needs to be uh, one hand applicable. So you need to be able to self-apply it, right? And a lot of these uh, uh, elastic bandages kind of sort of fail there because what are you going to do? They're just strips of elastic. Well, it's pretty easy. We're going to tie a loop in the end. And here's, I'm going to show you what we've done and how to put it on. Okay. So all we're going to do is you're just going to tie a loop in it. Okay, I've tied a little slip knot in it, so it'll tighten up on itself. And if I want to apply it to myself with uh, you know, one arm that's been injured, I'm going to lay this loop over top so that my other hand can still reach it. I'm going to reach through this loop right like here, and I'm going to grab the rest of this pressure bandage. Right? This comes through here. Because I want this to dress up nice, I'm going to start it from the top there, and then I'm going to wrap around. Remember, I want to try to keep this when it's fully installed about an inch and a half or more wide on the arm. I don't want to let it go super skinny because that's when you run into the problem of damaging, talking and installing tourniquets, uh, damaging the tissue at the top layer in order to get the uh, compression that you need at the bottom. So that's on. You can see how this thing is like quite robust. It's not ripping apart or anything. Um, the, the SWAT T, SWAT stands for stretch, wrap, and tuck. Okay, so me tucking this, I can't even get underneath that. That's a tight, that's a tight application right there. Probably just do another one under here. So I'm messing around with the, the final tie off, but the blood flow to this hand is effectively controlled at the moment. <laughs> Okay, so it's on. That took out ever long it took. Um, on legs, it's not as effective. It just isn't. And on, you know, uh, larger people, uh, grown ass men who squat and deadlift, stuff like that, it's really not effective. So this is a, this is a great option for any, any limbs smaller than that. And I really like these in civilian kits because they flex really well into uh, being, you know, being the compression wrap for a pressure bandage. Uh, just being the wrap for holding, you know, gauze or uh, a dry sterile cravat. Like if you have a burn for, if you have something dry on, on there and you want to just keep it wrapped up, this might work. Um, if you have abdominal injuries, uh, you know, for holding guts in or for, you know, putting a shirt, 
if you didn't have anything else or you know abdominal pads gauze what have you uh, to hold, hold everything together uh, junctional injuries uh, once you get those packed in order to get something on top of it to keep it clean and wrap around there's enough length here to do that okay um let's see if i can see the video will pick up the difference in skin tone yeah maybe anyways that's the esmark hd uh, on our website iridiumsolutions.ca they're available to you they're not sterile um when you get them but uh, if you've got a trauma situation that you're dealing with, your casualty or yourself aren't sterile anymore either. And by definition, every trauma casualty is going to a surgeon or a hospital provider, right? So we don't worry about the sterility at the point of care where we're at. We just worry about keeping as much of the blood inside of the body as fast as possible. I don't recommend these for your primary tourniquet because your primary tourniquet, you can apply more quickly. And there's really nothing quite as fast as a Cat Gen 7 over the arm ratchet it down and start crank it there really isn't um but these are a great secondary and these are great if you're using them on somebody else so check them out and uh thanks for watching comment below if you uh love tk4s and rats or rapid tourniquets and you think this is just some hokey pokiness comment below if uh you're never going to use a pressure bandage uh in place of a tourniquet because you're a you know cotcc zealot com uh comment below let's have a discussion about it uh, side note to all that stuff, people who hate on other people's choice of tourniquets, I'd like you to consider something. You're not going to be at their emergency and you're not responsible for their choices. You're responsible for your choices. You're going to be at your emergency when the bad shit is happening. No one's coming. It's up to you. So you choose what works for you. Don't worry about what the internet says. Okay. Get training pressure test your choices make sure they work for you under stress and duress and then ignore the bullshit out there okay you want to learn real shit come to us uh i'm going to teach you what you need to know and then i'm just going to ignore all the other stuff uh, one thing i will tell you about you know sort of non-standard tourniquets every current first aid level first aid course that's available in north america teaches improvised tourniquets as part of their standard curriculum Okay. So improvised tourniquets are still a thing. So using stuff in your environment is still a thing for making tourniquets. We're not at the point where everyone just accepts that a commercial off the shelf windless tourniquet is where our, our starting point. Okay. We're already at the point where we, we talk about improvised tourniquets. So there's no reason this can't be viable, but there are better choices. Okay. Uh, yeah, I feel like I had a did a whole different segment there but it's important stuff uh we're, we're sort of debunking myths and as we go forward we want to bring up everybody's understanding to a point where you have a base level competency that you can pass on to the people that you love you care about or you are responsible for and if you can do that and if you know when your time comes when you're called up to bat and you've got to do uh, life-saving interventions to to affect change in someone else's life and you know let them continue living or your own then you're ready. You're at the plate. This is Ed from Iridium Solutions <sighs> reminding you to get outside, get training, and keep getting after.